Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to my shop. This is episode two of my craft market series. This week, I'm making these serving trays. Stick around and I'll show you how I make them. We started the joiner getting one edge and one face flat on each of our two boards. Each board is about three inches wide and 21 inches long. I'm using cherry and maple. I like to use a trades marker on the face of the board so I can check my progress as I go. Then it's over to the planer to bring the boards down to rough thickness, just over three quarters of an inch. Next I rip the maple down to final width, which is three inches. And the cherry gets ripped to strips just wider than an inch and a half each. Then I square up one end of each board and cut them to rough length which is about 20 and a half inches. Over at the bench, I glue up the panel with the maple in the center. I like to use wax paper under my clamps to protect my bench from the glue squeeze up. Here you can see I mark the boards with a triangle to keep them in the right orientation before glue up. I let it sit in the clamps overnight and then came back and cleaned up the glue lines and ran it through the planer to bring it down to final thickness, which is about three quarters of an inch. Then it's back to the table saw to bring it to final length and width, which is six inches by 20 inches. To get rid of the saw marks, I clean up the long edges of the board with a smoothing plate. And then I hand sand both faces and all edges with 150 and 220 grit paper. Sanding by hand is nearly as quick as a power sander and it leaves a nice crisp edge. Here you can see me attaching my template with double sided tape. It's made from 3 quarter inch MDF and I use a combination of a router, a jigsaw and sandpaper to get nice clean cutouts. The bit I'm using to route the recess is a bowl and tray bit from Whiteside. I'll leave a link in the description below. I switch out the base plate for a larger shop made one to help balance the router on the template. Then I place the router on two blocks the same thickness as the template so I can zero out the depth stop. Because this bit is so large, it's important to slow down the speed of the router. My router has six speeds. I have it set on two and I've found this keeps it from burning and leaves a nice clean cut. I also make sure to only take off about a sixteenth of an inch per pass. Try to keep a nice slow, steady pace so you don't bog down the router or leave burn marks in the wood. This clip is going at about 4x speed, so I'm actually going pretty slow here. Then we can remove the template and see how we did. As you can see, this is pretty heavy duty stuff. Then it's back to the sandpaper to level out any router marks and remove any fuzzies. You can pick up these bench brushes at Harbor Freight for a few bucks. I keep them all over the shop. Finally, over at the router table, all the edges get a 1 8 inch radius round over. I think this leaves a really nice finished edge without being overdone. Remember to always do your end grain edges first, followed by your long grain edges to clean up any tear up. I finish these boards with three coats of General Finish's Salad Bowl Finish. I simply wipe on a wet coat and then after a few seconds I wipe off the excess after it's had a little bit of time to sink in. Salad Bowl Finish is food safe and will cure, unlike many other finishes common to cutting boards and similar items. A film finish is okay with these boards because they're used only for serving, not for cutting or preparing food. Once this finish is cured, it's entirely food safe and will require little to no future maintenance. I started making these serving boards for friends and family a few years ago as gifts, and they've been a big hit. I originally designed them for these tubs of cheese spread and crackers, but it works just as well with some fresh veggies and a tub of dip. I also added these clear bumpers to the bottom to protect whatever surface you set it on. They're made mostly from scraps and offcuts, so the material cost is low. And because I use a router and a template, they're easy to make and they're quick to batch out. I think they'll be a big seller at this year's farmer's markets. 
Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching.